This is the macro. It gives a set of instructions and allows an automatic performance of a specified task. This feature has changed the game of Beastworm Simulator on the largest scale, completely shifting the dynamic of how the game could be played. One singular color has risen above the rest and has propelled rapid growth of some of the greatest players to touch this platform. Here is the story of one of the most influential and ancient hive colors. We find ourselves in the summer of 2019, just after the blue backpack and other developments to the blue HQ have been added. After Star Journey, the endgame quests during this time would be both the Riley and Bucko quests, and players would do these quests and get the rewards in terms of honey to get on the daily leaderboards. This is where the first ever proper blue hive comes in. Blue was able to do these reputable quests most effectively. The Diamond Drain ability from the Diamond Mask scaled with Blue Bee Conversion, giving players the ability to stay in their fields forever without needing to make trips back to the hive. Players would therefore implement tons of Diamond Bees along with Ninja or Bubble Bees for Blue Bombs to fill their bags. Being a Blue Hive in this era would be an extreme luxury since the Diamond Mask was expensive for players at the time as they need to gather 5 Diamond Eggs along with sacrificing certain non-Blue Bees. This is also the era where I found evidence of the first recorded macro, which players would actually consider to be cheating back then. So if there is a script out there, I do highly encourage you not to pursue it. And if on it ends up seeing this, I do hope that we can take some type of action to prevent such things in the future. Again, exact same dump off. We'll, we'll do the same path to spider field, making a few left adjustments as he runs. Notice a few left adjustments. We'll run into the same wall in spider field. Again, this is just to kill the spider and get a little bit of extra loot. Perform a left turn with a flying parachute jump to bamboo. And it repeats. Uh, I think I've showed it three times in the video, so I don't want to go too much longer. But I did want to ask the question to you guys and let me know in the comments, is this cheating? I, th I have my own personal answer, I believe it is. But I would like you guys to chime in. Looking back on the McProsa video, it is a bit ironic how he was calling out macros at this time, even though macros would actually become instrumental to his success. April 6th of 2020, all three endgame masks get balance changes. Diamond Mask has its Diamond Drain modified and a decrease in instant blue conversion, but the capacity given by the Diamond Mask is increased from 2x to 3x. Bubble Mask also gets similar changes in terms of added capacity. There is a very specific vision that Onnit is developing here, and it's insanely different compared to how we see modern Hive colors, so let me explain. In June prior to the release of the Supreme Star Amulets that would forever change the endgame, Onnit had testing going on for three different Hive archetypes in which he wanted to be a part of the game. Before the Supreme Star, Hive colors were either meant to be for aesthetic or effective little tricks by endgame players, but never something really official. But the addition of the Supreme Star Amulet would make it official. Blue, however, was never meant to be the macro color. In fact, it was meant to be the active playing color. Red was seen as the macro color in this time period thanks to players like Jeff and Mindplex. Even though theoretically a macro for blue would honestly be effective enough, it wasn't like red where spices could keep a player in a field forever. This was an era without balloons, without complex macros, and without so many other luxuries that players have now. This was just an era of pure, unadulterated grinding, and of course jellybean spamming. So on June 6th of 2020, we enter a new age. Active Blue High players take the stage, and this is where I'd like to introduce the first two players that begin making headways. These players being Lipsius and Raccoon. While other players are scrambling to obtain gummy stars for their mixed hives, these two merely spam their hives with ungifted tadpoles and ninjas, and combined with the pop star, this creates a deadly combination. Now this was a period where COVID hit really hard, and many players were quarantined at home, so active playing didn't even seem to be an issue. They would spam boost every hour and make trillions. Both Lipsius and Raccoon climbed their way up the all-time leaderboards. Now this was the type of active play that Onnit was looking for in his game. Players would be forced to build a bubble bloat in smaller fields like Strawberry or Stump for an hour or two, and then after the bloat had been built up, they could begin to grind out their boosts. Without many great macro creators, players opted to auto-click for their bloat. Had a similar macro to Nature be introduced in this era, Blue Hives could have developed a similar playstyle like today. As the solo pop meta begins to stabilize, more players begin to roll for Supreme Star Amulets hoping for double passives. Thus the pop gummy is brought into the equation, which Onnit had predicted would become a meta. 
On June 26 of 2020, just after the release of Supreme Star Amulets, a player by the name of Roblox Coaster hits a world record gummy star as a blue hive, and this star was even larger than some early white hive players. As we shift out of the summer into the fall of 2020, players like Elol and Mosito have inspired players to switch to white and red hives due to the numbers they started to make from boosting as those colors. It had been discovered that nearly any passive paired with the star saw could be lethal. It went as far as some players even running pop saw, like SSS497. Surprisingly this worked, and players would actually run more vectors and ninjas in their hives to compensate for the lower attack from the tadpoles. Other than this however, blue hives were slowly fading out, as spam boosting wasn't viable nor was it fun to play for a majority of players. However, enter the Beesmas of 2020. Honey Day combined with the Galantine provides optimal conditions for blue hives to make a return. A player known as Bolo and another player known as a YSO5 take the stage, and make more honey than any other blue hive in this era, keeping up with white and red hives who are using windshine glitches. By using Gummy Pop yet again, Gummy Stars aligned with Pop Stars actually form stars that are quite large, and these players begin to average 40 trillion during their Beesmas boosts. This is the new meta for Blue moving forward, at least until the Beesmas of 2021. The date is December of 2021, where everything comes full circle. Absolute utopian for players that were Blue. This update completely changes the orientation of the game, and the introduction of the buoyant bee is just too much for anyone to ask for. It is without a doubt one of the most overpowered bees to be added to the game, and that is an understatement. Players who are blue or switched to blue during this beesmas have met a blessing in disguise. Hundreds, maybe even thousands of players are switching to blue to experience this blessing, and it pays off. For example, E Icy's is able to become the first to hit 1 quadrillion in a day as a blue hive, and many other players are hitting hundreds of trillions. Blue becomes the perfect hive color in terms of passive honey thanks to the mechanics of the balloon. Nectars give additional capacity along with other buffs, and jit bit macros are distributed like crazy. Blue had officially turned into the macro color, and the game from that year forward would forever change. It doesn't stop there though. Later down the line, macro developers like Zez and Natro create auto hotkey macros that are unique and powerful, and the public flavors these over the standard jit bit macros. They do indeed carry the community, and they are used by everyone, no matter which hive color. Blue continues to benefit the most and Elol macros his way up to the top spot, asserting a near permanent dominance over the all-time leaderboard. Just some noob is not far behind, but the support for Elol is unrivaled and he continues to hold his spot without the need to actively play. So after this update comes Robobear in 2022 and of course Stickers in 2024. There's not much that's changed with Blue, but I do know that some players are just hella rich, like Contemplation All or Will Will, and they're just having fun as Blue and still going at it pretty well. Other than that though, there's not too much that's changed with Blue ever since the Boy and B update. It's changed Beast Swarm, and the pure active playing isn't a thing for endgame players anymore. The macro is officially here to stay, and honestly, I can't complain. It's definitely carried me through a lot of material droughts or things like that. But do keep in mind that Blue still shouldn't be seen as a pure macro color. If you're a mid-game player who's about to get the Supreme Star Emily and you're still deciding which color to go as, please do choose blue. Go look up the necessary guides and have fun. Not only is it the most effective color, but you're literally going to be experiencing a piece of Beast Swarm history. Almost all the top players have been this hive color at some point of their lives, and it's undergone some of the most changes as well. 